Hello, and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. I am once again looking at both Big Sleep and Deep Days over on GitHub. There have been absolutely loads of updates since my last video, and also lots of people asking questions on how to get this installed, so I'll be running through that in absolutely minute detail. Okay, let's have a dig in. Now, Big Sleep and Deep Days. Now, both now on version 0.7. We've got 0.7.1 for Big Sleep and 0.7.2 for Deep Days. Last time I looked at this, it was somewhere around version 0.4. There have also been updates to PyTorch as well. PyTorch is now up to 1.8.0 from 1.7.1, and this is now CUDA 11.1. And last time it was 11.0. There have been a number of fixes to both Big Sleep and Deep Days. So we've got this fix for OpenAI ClipJit issue. So if you are seeing runtime error method forward is not defined, then those have both been fixed in Big Sleep and Deep Days. Big Sleep also now features EMI and a text minimization feature. Deep Days has a new story mode, and you can also use an image as a goal. So let's dig in. They've got these various requirements, and basically it's the same requirements as last time. You will need a powerful NVIDIA GPU if you are going to be running this stuff locally. And uh, Deep Days can be run with 4GB of VRAM, but Big Sleep will need at least 7, even if you're producing quite small images. You will need the latest NVIDIA drivers. So, NVIDIA drivers there. Now, all these links will be down in the description, as well as all the commands to copy and paste. So if you want to download the very latest NVIDIA drivers, there it is. You select your particular card and your operating system. You click search and then download and install. Now, I also have the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit, which is over here. So you pick your operating system. I'm using Linux, x86-64, Ubuntu, 2004, and I've got the run file local. And it just gives you the two commands to run there dead easy. Now, that does come with the drivers as well as the two CUDA toolkit, uh, but it's not necessarily the latest drivers, which is why I say, you know, you can grab the latest drivers from there. Okay, great stuff. Now, for my P uh, Python virtual environment, I am using Anaconda, but you can use Miniconda if you want. And I've got Anaconda over here. There's the website, personal edition. It's free, so don't worry about the pricing bit up at the top there. You can just click download. That goes here, Python 3.8. 64-bit installer there. So you just click on that. As you can see down the bottom, that's a, a .sh file. So you just run that. That will install Anaconda for you. It takes a few seconds, and then you are ready to rock and roll. Now, if you don't have a powerful NVIDIA GPU, you can indeed use Google's computers via these Google Colab notebooks. If you scroll down a little bit, then you'll have this simplified notebook. If we click on that, that will open up a Google Colab notebook. And then to use these, basically you just click on the play button up in the top left corner. As you can see, these commands are pretty much the same as you would run from your terminal, apart from they have a little exclamation mark at the front there. That's about the only difference. And so uh, that should go through once you click play, do all that. And then you've got a nice GUI here. So you can type in your text, change some of these options, click play again, and eventually that will come through and do its stuff. Now your files will go into a contents directory. You can click on the little folder there and uh, you'll get all your files appear in there ready for you to download. Okay, so let's get ready and install this locally. So first, just a little tiny bit of housekeeping. I'm going to change directory into this uh, empty directory here. Same one I've got here, uh, purely because it's just somewhere to keep all the images. I like, I like being nice and tidy. So let's copy and paste that. You can call your directory whatever you want and put it wherever you like. I'm just putting it in GitHub Jeep images because because reasons, because reasons. Now, I'm also going to run both Dream and Imagine with the open folder false option each time because it's, it's there. I've already got it open. I can see it. Right, so let's start. Let's, let's create this new Python 3.9 virtual environment called Big Sleep New. There we go. We'll paste that command in there. That does its collecting package metadata stuff and a little spinning cursor. It'll take a few seconds and then proceed. Yes, please. There we go. Okay, so that's created my new environment. The next thing I need to do is activate it. So we'll copy and paste this one in. There we go. So you can see the base there changed to big sleep new. So I'm in my new 
Python 3.9 virtual environment. So next up, need to install PyTorch. Now I'm using one of the new NVIDIA cards. So if you've got a 3080 or 3090, something like that, then you definitely need to do this first. If you've got an older card, you, you may be able to get away with it. But uh, let's have a look at the PyTorch website because this, this shows you all the various different ways that you can install PyTorch. So we'll pop over there, install. And we've got the option here, start locally. So stable is now 1.8, my OS is Linux, package, I'm going to go with pip, language is Python, and CUDA 11.1. So I'll just copy and paste that, copy, paste, there we go, and then we'll install that. Now there's the other option here as well, Conda. So you can do Conda install as well. And uh, one of the benefits of using Conda is it will install that NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit 11.1 for you. So if you're having trouble installing the CUDA Toolkit, that one there, or you just don't want to, or you want a nice easy way, then uh, Conda install PyTorch, Torch Vision, Torch Audio, CUDA Toolkit 11.1 minus C PyTorch minus C Conda Forge will do all that for you. So. This will take a few minutes just to download. So I'm going to use the power of video editing to manipulate time. Let's see you on the flip side. Okay, great stuff. So that is PyTorch installed. We are ready to install both Big Sleep and Deep Days. Now I'm using the minus U option there or because if you've already got your, your PyTorch environment uh, and the old version of Big Sleep or Deep Days installed. Basically all minus U does is upgrade it. So if you've got the old one, 0.4 or 0.5 or whatever, run the minus U and that will update you to the very latest version. As you can see there, that's 0.7.1 for Big Sleep. And uh, that will just take a few seconds. Once that's done, we'll also do exactly the same thing to install Deep Days. So pip install Deep Days minus U. There we go, we can pop that in one there, there. Pip install deep days. Not as much to install there because it's already installed. Okay, great stuff. So now you've got both big sleep and deep days installed. You can run them. Now you can run them. So let's do this most basic dream here. Now uh, I'm using Epochs 1 and Iterations 500 just because that's a lot quicker to run. Otherwise it takes about an hour uh, by default for you to get the final image through. So let's just run this dream. So I'm dreaming of a double bed with wings flying through the sky. And once again, I will use the power of video editing to manipulate time. Okay, so that's done its thing. Let's have a quick look at the image. There you go. There you go, a bed flying through the sky with wings sort of obviously you will run it with a few more epochs if you fancy and higher iterations now help is also now a standard man page so if we run this let's make this a little bit bigger so we're running dream minus help there and we get this nice manual page showing us all the different options for dream so dream text and the flags and now we've got this new one in here as well text min you've got the learning rate the image size gradients epochs all that sort of fancy stuff there so that's how you get all the help. And uh, if you want to use some of those options, there's some of those options in play there. So let's just have a quick look at that. Paste that one in there. So I'm using a slightly lower learning rate. Uh, again, Epochs 1 and Iterations 500 for speed. And I'm using the option Save Best there as well. So let's have a quick look what that will generate. Once again, I will manipulate time as well. Awesome, there you go. So there is my, uh, there's my fish, sort of, with the head of a monkey and the tail of a bird. Probably needs a few more iterations and epochs, but that is the basic example. And uh, as I mentioned before in my previous video, if you drop the values of save every, so you've got there, save every 10, and uh, you can basically make lots and lots and lots of frames that way and run FFmpeg to create a movie. So some little notes on VRAM usage there. So if you change image size down to 128, then uh, that uses 6.6 .6 mbibytes. If you've got an image size of 256, that's 7.1 mbibytes. And if you're on 512, that uses a whopping 8.3 mbibytes. So let's uh, let's let's look at that. And uh, and uh, yeah, if if you haven't got that much VRAM, then um, mm, yeah. Yeah, probably Google Colab is the best option for you. Now, some of the new things, some of the new things, you can now use this new text min option. 
So let's have a look at that. We'll, we'll pop this over here. And basically this, this is the opposite of text. So that's the text you want. And text min is the text you don't want. So you don't want a cat and you don't want night and you don't want a city. So let's paste that one in and see what that looks like. And there we go. So let's have a look at that image. There we go. There we go. It's a multicolored dog wearing a hat, sort of, sort of. But yeah, there, yeah, there you go. So you've got this new text minimization feature. Right, let's have a look at the same thing with deep days. So deep days, you can now run this. Let's let's pop this in. And hopefully we won't get that no method defined forward error. I'm imagining a world without war. And there we go. It is it is imagining from the depth of the depths of its weights. So let's manipulate time once again and see how that comes out. Okay, so there we are, that one has finished. And as you can see, there are lots of images there. Let's just have a look at that one. So there you go, there's a world without war quite quickly generated. Now, if you haven't got very much VRAM at all, then there are a few options you can use. You can drop the image size, you can have a very low batch size, and you can increase the gradient accumulate. So if we just pop this one in here, this is imagining a GPU with less than eight gigabytes of VRAM. And we'll just have a, a little look at the VRAM over here. That is generating through. And oh, this is this is actually using a little bit more than expected here. But I've got lots of windows open as well. So uh, that's using uh, 4.3 gig on, uh, on the video card there. I'm just going to stop that one. But uh, you can also go the opposite way around as well. And you can imagine a card whose gravity pulls Earth out of its orbit using the opposite set of options. So I've got a much bigger image here using 1024, the batch size of 16 and gradient accumulate every one. And as you can see, that is now using 20 gigs of VRAM. I will also stop that one quickly as well. So that's how you can use deep days with uh, low amounts of VRAM and enormous amounts of VRAM as well. But we've also got some new things in here, some new things. Yes, we've got a story mode and image as a goal. Okay, so stories create lots and lots of images. So one thing I'm going to do is just create a new directory for that and change directory into there. It will pop into here. So there's my there's my stories directory. Now for this, you can put lots and lots and lots and lots of text in. So you're not you're not limited to the original 75 characters or whatever it was. Um, now you've got this minus minus create story equals true option, then story start words and uh, story words per epoch. So story start word six, it's going to use the first six words and then every seven words after that. Um, I'm increasing the batch size here just to let it run more quickly. Uh, the epochs don't have any um, use here because the epochs are based off the words per story. So if I just run that, there we go, copy, paste, that will run through and imagine. Now this sort of splits the text up into these little bits and pieces. Let's pop into the new story directory there. So you get this story transitions text. And you'll see there it's started on the first few words and that will go through and uh, generate a whole array of images. Once again, I will manipulate time so you can see the end result rather quickly. So there we go. Let's take a quick look at that one. It starts off quite dim and there, there you go. There you go. Whoa. Goes through telling the story. Obviously, you can use FFmpeg like before to turn that into a little MP4 movie. Excellent stuff. What other fun stuff have we got in here? Well, you can also use an image as a goal now as well. So I've got a particular image there that I'm using. And I'm merging it with the text as well. The flowers bloomed like starlight falling into a puddle. And uh, let's just have a, a quick look at that one. 
I will change directory out of my story first. There we go. So I'm back in the deep images directory. Run that imagine. Pop back over here. And uh, we'll let that run through. Of course, I will manipulate time just for you. Just stop that one a little bit early, otherwise that will take over an hour. But we can see, there we go, flowers bloomed like starlight. And just to show you the original image over here, my pictures, all styles, and here somewhere, there we go. There is the original image, and there is the one generated along with the text. So you can see there's uh, quite a good similarity there. Awesome stuff. So there you go, all the updates to Big Sleep and Deep Days, lots of bug fixes, various new features and things, all very good indeed. Anyway, uh, if you do have any issues, do let me know down in the comments below. Obviously all this stuff will be in the description, so you can just copy and paste it and install it on your own computer. That's it for now, Rodent out.